Hello, Justin. Hey, how you doing, man? All right. Thank Welcome to your first Machina Bristronica. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. It's a lot of fun so far. Yeah, man. So we met in Superbooth last year. Yeah. And that was kind of, I think, your was that your first outing that was as our, a company? Yeah, that's right. That was our first time presenting as a company, like, at a, at a trade show kind of thing. Ferry Island Modular. And I was, I, I absolutely loved uh, four C's, which you were showing off there Thank that you. year. So yeah, um, it it'd be great. I, I believe this is now available because it wasn't available to buy when That's we right, first yeah. met. It's available for, for pre-order now. Um, you can see we got we actually have these are actually units. There's actually units in those boxes. There's real things in here. Yes, yes. And so uh, they're they're going to be available in stores end of October is our goal. We just it's just a question of getting things shipped out, getting the things, uh, getting the final manufacturing done, and everything's. Everything's looking up uh, roses or whatever people say. Awesome, man. Well, it'd be great to hear a little bit more. Right on. And if you want to, you know, tell us a again just a quick overview of what this is. Yes. Um, and I'll turn the sound up so we have something here. Yeah. So the 10,000 mile overview is, uh, and you can refer to the previous video from uh, from Superbooth, but this is we call four four dimensional wavetable oscillator. And you have everything you would expect out of an oscillator and everything you would expect out of a wavetable oscillator. So you have your, your uh, X, Y, and Z uh, controls to control your position within the wave cube. You have tune. You have a tuning lock, which is handy for performing. But what we bring to the table that I think is a little bit different is you have these four outputs that are related. And so if you think about it like your output one is, um, is one point within a coordinate cube, X, Y, and Z dimensions. And that's all set by your initial frequency and then your X, Y, and Z position within that cube. Okay. And then your your other three outputs, those are also points within the cube, and then they're they're relative to the first cube based on your X, Y, and Z spread. That's the position within Whoa. the cube. And then uh, your you have a frequency spread, which gives you a frequency offset that yeah. cascades up through the four outputs. <laughs> so, and it, and it might sound a little bit like uh, like you know, techno babble or whatever, but we were really thinking about it in terms of a, almost like a parallel, like parallel realities or something. Like <laughs> if you imagine like, you know, you start with, you start with a wave position and a frequency. Yeah. And that's your initial point. And let's call that timeline A. But then you also have another frequency and then another wave position yeah. defined by these offsets. Yeah. And it's almost like the butterfly effect. Like you all start at the same point and then you go off on different directions. So, uh, I, so the way I've been thinking about it, if we look at this box here yeah. and looking at the, you know, X, Y, Z, if you like. Yes, sir. On those, and it's like we're inside this box somewhere as a point, yeah. a starting point. And then from there, that's that frequency, and then you can you can kind of spread out within that three-dimensional space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. That's exactly okay, it. that's that, that, that sort of makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a really good way to describe it. And I mean, the the beauty of that approach, in my opinion, is that you're getting a lot for very little, yeah. and you you're sort of maintaining that timbral coherence because. Like it's not four separate voices, yeah. And so you know you're still within the same wave. So as you offset the wave, it's going to sound different, but it's going to still sound like related to the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You also have 12 banks, uh, or up to 12 banks, and those all live on your SD card. You've got LFO mode. You've got audio rate modulation with these inputs here and your and your uh, your modes here. Then you have uh, three different types of sync, and three different types of audio rate mod. And what you don't see on here, as we as we always say, is there's no screens, there's no presets, yeah. and there's no weird button combinations to try to remember. So that's kind of what we're bringing to the table, and we're really, really excited to see people get their hands on this. Lovely. You know? Well, do you want to take us through that three-dimensional space a bit? Have you got yeah. something patched up here? I do, I do, I do. Is it? Are we live? We are, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so right now it's just droning. You know, we're, we're droning, yeah. and, uh, you know, if I go through basic... You know, you can hear these. So I just have one output going right now. Yeah. And as I sort of just kind of turn knobs, you know, you just kind of hear different timbrality. You know, and then you have um, here's like some just basic waves, like that's yeah. very square adjacent. If I and this because the first bank, it's basically um, fundamental. Uh, even harmonics and odd harmonics. Uh -huh. So it's like if I turn that up, now we got pretty close to a square wave, or a, excuse me, a sawtooth wave. Yeah. Um, then we got, this is one of my favorite 
uh, one of my favorite banks. This is based on a, a Chaos Attractor. And uh, you can, uh, you get these, uh, say it with me now, sing song harmonics, <laughs> <laughs> as uh, somebody that you might know uh, might say. <laughs> you know, but it, it sounds really cool. And this is just coming through unfiltered. So then what I got is a little patch going here where if I bring this to, I think I had this, this one going. If I bring in a bit of this, you get a bit of a sub. Um, yeah, there we go. That sounded pretty good and growly. Nice. You know, and if I turn down, turn this up and bring this up, we got a bit of a, just turn it up oh, a yes. bit of a filter. Yeah. So we should get kind of a nice sounding like, you know, there we go. Lovely. Yeah. So that's the X, Y position and the Z position there. Yeah. And we're just sort of morphing through until we find something we like. We get this kind of nice, like, throbbing bass yeah. thing happening. We should bring in a bit of a, uh, just a little bit of a sequence. Nothing too outrageous, yeah. but. And, and there's then, quite a lot of CV input, actually, on this as well. Absolutely, so yeah. all of this is modulatable, isn't it? The yes. X, Y, Z position, the spreads, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, you've got control over... I mean, I felt like it wouldn't be modular if you didn't have a ton of CV. Yeah, I mean, right. <laughs> you've got you've got CV over your bank, which could be a lot of fun. Oh, okay. You've got CV over over your FM if you yeah. want to, you know, if you want to do like just like uh, vibrato and things like that. CV over your spread, which is a lot of fun to sequence. Yeah. Like, and then yeah, your CV over your X, Y, and Z positions, and then X, Y, and Z spreads, and we got attenuators on most things, not everything. Then you yeah, then you got your audio rate input. So if I bring in this, I got. I have an I have a audio coming from Wogglebug. There's actually two inputs, isn't there? Yes, and they are they are normal together. Oh, okay. So so it's really great for like processing things through, and you, it's almost like you get the stereo for free. Right. So this is not in stereo, but I'm going to bring in a stereo pad in a sec. Okay. But then if I bring in this and turn this up a touch. There we go. There we go. So now what we got is this is the audio from Wogglebug, which I think a lot of people have a hard time finding a use for. But, I, <laughs> but I'm, I'm running that as a as an input to the phase mod. Right. And, and I'm and I, as I'm like cutting it with a VCA, you're getting this kind of like percussion thing yeah, yeah, yeah. on top of your yeah. um, on top of your bass. Then if I bring in this little pad. And then I got this one on a uh, on the joystick. Oh, yeah, that's nice. And as I kind of pan around, you can hear you get the nice filter and then the nice the, the timbre mod because I'm I'm modulating the Z spread. So you should be able to hear a really nice stereo. Stereo, image. yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I'll even like um, I'll take this out and then turn this down. We can hear that drone a little bit better. It sounds really nice and rich. It's really, really rich. Yeah. And, you know, you get the stereo. So, yeah. Um, that's not even... And, I, I, you know, trying to prep for this video, I was even thinking, like, well, what other stuff could I show you guys? I've been experimenting a lot with self-patching. Yeah. Uh, taking, for example, these bottom two outputs and going back in, like literal cross-modulation, this yeah. one to this one, this one to this one. Yeah. And then it's nice because you're getting you're getting your phase mod, or for example, your um, your wave shaper, or like we, we call it FSU mode, which just sounds like super crunchy. <laughs> um, and uh, you get that like with with your with your relationship to your frequency spread, like it's built in. Yeah. If that makes any sense, so it's easier to keep like keep in tune and stuff. Yeah. Also, um, I'll take two outputs and run, for example, into blinds, and I'll do like a like a ring mod. And that oh, gets, yes. That could be really interesting to use two outputs for ring mod, like when it's the same source, because if you got your spread set right, you don't have to worry about it beating, like you can sort of lock in the frequencies. There's just a lot of cool stuff you can yeah. do with it. Um, probably Absolutely. a lot more than we have time for, but especially because we want to get Yuko over here. Involved. Oh, right. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to switch over to this one now, Yeah. and we're going to hear something going on in there. We've got some other patches going on within this. So we're just going to swap the audio over. 
Lovely. Sounds haunting. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, so I have a drone, like a court, court-based drone patch going on here now. Yeah. Hi, I'm Yuka, by the way. Hey. <laughs> so I, uh, I've taken the four outputs of, uh, of four Cs, put them into a VCA that I'm slowly modulating so that it becomes this, this uh, ever-changing uh, ocean of sound. Hence the, the name, Four Cs, perhaps. Hence the name. Good idea, oh. by the way. I have to say, yeah. <laughs> and then this, this uh, m m one of my favorite is exactly to cr take the outputs and make it into a, into a really nice evolving patch that I can then use the outputs for uh, different things. For instance, now I've set it up so that uh, output pairs go into LPGs, low-pass gates, so I can take Make it easy and easily into like like a very ry rhythmic thing also. I can nicely like in, during a live set, for instance, I can easily move from uh, more droney patches to to something more rhythmic. Especially if you do it with each and every uh, every output. That sounds absolutely beautiful. Well, have you, have you it got has some a reverb there on the end. Of, it? of course, of it course. has the the really good mimeophone. Yeah. Shout out to the make noise guys, it's, it's <laughs> one of my favorite modules. It goes uh, through a filter here, of course. Yeah. It's always useful, or often useful for a wavetable oscillator to have a filter. But here, here it may be uh, placed nicely with the reverb. So Very then, nice. Then one thing that I also like to do is to bring noise into the mix. So I have uh, white noise coming into the, to the uh, oscillator mod modulation and I can make it into this really nice sort of uh, noisy washes. So where's the noise going into? It, uh, it's, it's going into the audio inputs. Into so you can, audio use input. it, you can use it for uh, phase modulation and uh, wave shaping and uh, digital e XOR. Lovely. So, and especially with uh, like noisy uh, or other, other also uh, like the oscillator modulation paired with some uh, rhythmic stuff, you can make some really nice sort of uh, percussive things. Then mix in with a kick, and suddenly you had have like it's a percussion module, which is <laughs> which is really nice. Nice. Can you turn the kick down just a little bit? Just yes. a little overloaded. I want to hear more of the... Yeah. It's beautiful. And now I was only in, inside one bank, of course. So we have 12 of these banks. Yeah. So it's easy to go into very different different stuff, especially with the, the oscillator modulation. If you, uh, comp uh, I sometimes do so that I use a sample and hold to control both the bank and then uh, play with the oscilla oscillator modulation, yeah. and it's a really nice percussive percussive way also to uh, yeah. compose. Yeah. I think very nice. This is this is this patch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, look, th uh, I mean, um, yeah, come on in. <laughs> on the same mic. Speak on the yeah. same mic. Yeah. Listen, thank you so much for this. I, I think you. this is an excellent entry, first debut for, you know, a company into the into the Eurorack world. So, uh, yeah, well done. Really like the sound of this. You should be super happy with this one, guys. So we are. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much you. again for the demo. And so people can go and pre-order this now and yeah, get right it. Yeah, right away if they want. It's I, I recommend that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great work. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.